good. Somebody in the back know what, knows what they're doing. All right, so it's my pleasure to introduce our next spe speaker, Dr. Kieta Okuda. Uh, Dr. Okuda joined Amano Enzyme in 2008. He has a PhD degree in molecular biology from uh, Nagoya University. He has been engaged in the development of industrial enzymes. He has interest in advanced technologies to create innovative enzymes for sustainable industry. He believes that the development of innovative enzymes will contribute to circular economy. Among his research interests are industrial enzyme application, molecular biology of enzyme engineering, and introduction of, uh, in introduction of advanced technologies into enzyme design. Uh, thank you very much, Pam, uh, kind introduction. And I'm honored to be the speaker today. As Mr. Amano mentioned in the beginning, it is a memorial day for Amano to sponsor, host the first North America Japan Enzyme Technology Symposium. Then I'm going to talk about enzyme application for plant-based food. Then before get started, I would like to talk, introduce about Amano enzyme. Uh, we actually have long history. Uh, originally founded more than 120 years ago. Then we've been focusing on the enzyme business over 70 years now, yeah, which is long. Then uh, this is the picture, the R&D center in Japan very clean, uh, green, and quiet, very, very nice to work. And this here, this shows our global network, the Amano Group. Uh, in the US, the, we based in the Chicago area, the west suburb. Uh, there, we, I, I actually was working here for five years. Then there, we have the branding facility that where the, all the enzymes shipped from Japan, then we brand it here, then distribute to the customer in the North America and South America. Then in terms of manufacturing, our production mostly happens in Japan and uh, China. Then we also have office in uh, Thailand and the UK, I mean, that's how we interact with customers over in the world. And as a enzyme company, uh, we believe enzymes has uh, millions of possibilities. So we produce the enzymes from the microorganism. Then on the left, uh, if necessary, we go to tropical forest to collect the soil sample. Uh, with that, uh, right now, our microorganism library, the strain is over 16,000, uh, which is a lot. Then finally, uh, this is the last slide about Amano enzyme. Uh, our company slogan is change the future with enzymes that surprises the world. Uh, we have three synergies. The first is about business, uh, where we have customers in the medical area as well as the food area. So that helps us understand the market widely and globally. Then second is about uh, the production system. So we produce enzymes with the koji, the solid fermentation and the liquid fermentation. Then this allows us to have the variety of unique enzymes. Then finally, the, the other one is the biotechnology. So we've been keep developing the modern and uh, classical biotechnology. So then with these three synergies, so we can make this happen. 
So then today I will uh, introduce the three enzymes under their application. The first enzyme I like to introduce is the protein glutaminase 500, the PG500 for the improving the plant protein functionality. The PG is an enzyme that catalyzes the glutamine residue in protein to the glutamate. I mean, here uh, what I like to emphasize is the PG500 uh, does not cleave the protein, the chain. It just changed the charge of the protein. So with this react, with that reaction, the protein conformation changes. The I mean more more water molecule has access to the protein, so which contribute to the improve the solubility and emulsifying property. So then again, the PG500 delivers the multiple benefits to the daily alternative application. Uh, for example, the improved the protein solubility, mouthfeel, and uh, handling. So, so let's take a look for it. Uh, regarding solubility, uh, here we tested out the four different protein sources. Uh, like pea protein, uh, chickpea, soy, and rice protein. Then what we did is the 10% solution was were prepared and uh, incubated with PG500 with this condition. After the incubation, uh, we just corrected the soluble fraction to measure the absorbance at 280, which indicate the protein content in the solution. Then on the right, uh, as you can see, the PG treated sample, which is the green bar. So most, all of the protein sources increase the solubility uh, by 15% to 50%. So this means uh, you, can, you can put more soluble protein in your finished product. Uh, then about second thing, the mouthfeel. Uh, in order to evaluate the mouthfeel, so we conducted the tribology test with the support of uh, NISO, who is our food research company in Netherlands. And tribology is a technique that explains the oral, oral food structure and the mouthfeel by measuring the lubrication properties. Then coefficient of friction uh, was measured at different speed. Then here, the lower the value means the smoother the mouse bill. Then PG treated soy milk showed the lower co-friction of friction, uh, coefficient of friction. Then in the meantime, the, our sensory has also confirmed the smoother mouse peel in the PG treated soy milk. So the tribology uh, explained the mouth peel of the plant based milk. Then uh, this is the last slide about the PG 500. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the PG has just changed the charge of the protein, then it's, in terms of the isoelectric point, the PG, with PG treatment, the isoelectric point is slightly shift to acidic pH. So then, like this. Then one of the advantage for this change is the prevent curdling. I think that some of you may have seen the plant-based milk like uh, almond and oat milk is start curdle when mixed with coffee. Uh, this, uh, one of the reason is the pH. I mean, usually a typical isoelectric point of plant protein is five to six, then 
coffee is pH 5.5. So once you get the pH on this range, the curdling start. However, the with PG500 treatment, you, you won't see this. So let me play the video. That's on the left is a no PG treatment. Then right is uh, right side is a PG treated. So you you see the control sample immediately start the curdling. Meanwhile, the, on the other hand, the PG500 stay homogeneous. I think uh, that's all for the PG500. Uh, today I only introduced a three point, but the uh, PG500 has more delivers more advantages. So I hope you test PG500 on your hand. So then the second topic I'm gonna talk about is uh, masking beanie flavor with cyclodexin glucanotransferase, CGT. Uh, the pea, pea protein and soy protein are the great ingredients having the nice characteristics for the plant-based meat application. Uh, however, the one of the downside is the uh, beanie flavor. Then, so far, 20 to 30 compounds uh, identified uh, having the beanie flavor. The, for example, the N-hexanol and the one octane three oil and benzaldehyde. Then, to so people try to reduce the beanie flavor. Then, from Amano. So our idea is to trap the beanie flavor with the cyclodextrin. Now cyclodextrin is a cyclic oligosaccharide with uh, the six to eight glucose molecules. And it's very popular, uh, popular compound as a masking agent. Then uh, we thought the beanie flavor compound might be trapped with the cyclodextrin uh, because the inside the cyclodextrin is the hydrophobic and uh, mostly the, the beanie flavor compound also the hydrophobic. Then to check the proof of concept, we uh, just added alpha and beta cyclodextrin to the plant-based patty making process. So then volatile compounds were uh, measured, analyzed with the GCMS. On the left, the green is the alpha CD treated sample, then beta is uh, the light blue one, then as you can see, the alpha CD is very effective to reduce the hexanol, heptanol. So this type of the long chain, long chain compound. Then on the other hand, the beta CD is very effective for the benzaldehyde. So this type of the more bulky compound. From us, that these findings uh, make sense because the, when you look at the size, the inside the alpha CD and the long chain aldehyde is about the same. And same thing with the beta CD and the aromatic ring right here. So we uh, proof of concept is checked then but, uh, for the next step, to be labeled friendly, uh, our s we think that if it is possible to produce the cyclodextrin from the starch, because uh, if the enzyme is not active in the finished product, the it is considered processing aid and uh, you don't need to label it. Then from the, our product list, uh, we confirm that our CGT, the product name is Contraline. It's produced a good amount of cyclodextrin from the starch. 
with this result, we just incorporate the enzymatic process to the putty making process, the where the starch and the CGT enzymes are added to the formulation, then making the parties. The same thing, the volatile compound are analyzed with the GCMS. Then on the left, you can see the most of the volatile compound are reduced with the CGT treatment, about the half. So then on the right, uh, we just picked up the two compounds, the hexanal and the benzaldehyde, showing the smaller, lower peak with the CG treatment. So th then, just in case, so we did the sensory test to see if any, there is any difference in uh, the flavor. Then our sensory panelist, uh, you know, the clearly shows the significant reduction in beanie, beanie flavor. So we successfully developed the clean label of flavor by masking system with the enzymatic process. <laughs> and uh, this is the last topic about the salt reduction. You know, the salt reduction is a general concern. The WHO, the back in 2020, they agreed to reduce the sodium intake by 30% by 2025. Uh, they recommend the two gram of sodium intake per day. Uh, however, uh, right now the average is estimated uh, 4.3 gram, uh, which is way too high. So then if the target is achieved, uh, seven millions of lives will be saved according to them. Then, however, the, this year, 2023, the last March, they updated, uh, they reported that we are really behind to the target. So then, as a enzyme company, we think uh, we can, enzyme can help reduce the sodium intake by increasing the uh, savory flavor, umami flavor. Then the enzyme I like to introduce here is the Mamizyme Pulse MA. Uh, this is the branded enzyme uh, containing the two different types of the protease and the glutaminase. Uh, with Mamizyme treatment, the protein initially the breakdown, partially breakdown with the endoprotease, then amino acid and the, uh, amino acid and the small peptide are produced with the exoprotease. And finally, the glutamine is converted to the glutamate with the glutaminase to increase the umami flavor, savory flavor. And then what we did is uh, just uh, got the vegetable broth from the market, then treat it with the mamizyme enzyme. Then after that, adding the, added the sodium, sodium, just adjusting the same level of the salt level, 0.5%. Then did the sensory test. Then our trained panelists uh, detected the significant increase in uh, umami, kokumi, and saltiness. Then after this, uh, so we just in case checked the sodium level in the sample to see if the enzyme treatment increased the sodium, but uh, it came out the sodium level is the same. There are no enzyme treatment and the umamizyme treatment is the same. And meanwhile, the glutamate is increased with the mamizyme treatment, so which makes sense. Then for the next step, Amano, so we try to understand how much salt reduction can be achieved with the mamizyme treatment. Uh, here we 
pre oh, let's see. we prepared five different samples. The, on the left, this is the 0.5 percent of salt, but no enzyme. Uh, this is saltiness rating. The uh, here is the one. So this is a reference sample. Then our sensory panelist rated the, these treated sample compared to the reference sample. Then when you look at the 0.5% of the salt that with treatment, uh, they rated at around 1.25. Now this means 25% of the saltiness is enhanced with the umamizan treatment. Then if you look at the 0.4% of the salt, uh, they rated this sample around one. So this means uh, technically enzyme it is possible to contribute the salt reduction by 20%. Then I, yeah, I hope that it's gonna be that big plus for the human health. Yep, I, yeah, I think that's all for from my side, and thanks for the attention, thank you. You were speaking about cyclodextrin and reduction of beany flavor. Yeah. And treatment with CGT. You showed some figures that the beany value reduced and savory went up. Oh, yeah. Is this because of the actual savory note creation or the relative uh, values are changing? I think it just bounced out the, the just to mask the beany flavor. Then that's sensory panelists can detect the more umami flavor. So, I mean, enzyme, this time enzyme treatment does not produce any umami flavor, just to reduce the, suppress the beaniness. Thank you, Dr. Okuda, for your presentation today. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker.